Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when this finds you. Just want to talk about a little area today. You know, I've touched on it in different places and going to touch on it some more in the future as well, if all goes well. You know, we've heard the statement that racism is so American that when you protest racism, people think you're protesting America. Oh, well, what does that say about Christianity? When you start questioning Christianity, many think you are criticizing the Bible. You know, I've told you they're not the same thing. We have actually allowed others to tell us what the Bible is and what the Bible means. However, the Christian church has actually done a masterful job of telling us what the Bible says. You know, especially when it comes to black people. Seminaries were engulfed and heavily supported slavery. Yet, many of our black pastors went to get educated by the system that actually promoted slavery. And that's why many of those same black pastors have a problem with the color of the people in the Bible. Think about some of the videos I've released on Christianity, the Bible and the church. The people that have a problem with what I'm teaching are the ones who have been Euro-doctrinated. The European uh, mindset has captivated them. See, the truth is not discriminatory. The truth is not hate speech. The truth is not racist. You know, we look at the incident that happened over in Alabama a few weeks ago when the whites attacked the black man. So that shows that there are still whites walking among us who believe they can do whatever the hell they want to do. And we as blacks are supposed to take whatever they do to us and we're supposed to just accept it like things were in the past. Hey, blacks are getting tired of that behavior. When you look at the video of the fight, you see a white woman go and grab the black man instead of the white man. Well, that actually showed a form of aggression to the black people who were there, and they responded. The white woman should have grabbed the man who looked like her. But since black men have been historically labeled as brutes, she had to stop what she perceived to be the bigger threat, even though the black man didn't start the fight. And see, when those black women responded, they were telling that white woman, you're going to learn today. And when black America responded to the incident, they were telling white America, you're going to learn today. You see, nature did not make black men and women inferior. Oppressors and oppression did. See, we talk about Christians seeing everyone as the same. But it was Christians who were doing most of the persecution historically. I guarantee you several whites that started the behavior over in Alabama, no active churchgoers. Christians say we are equal, right? Well, during those days of slavery, how many white churches would even dare to invite a black person to the church they attended? And don't come at me with that was how it was back then. No, it wasn't. Before your Europeans came over here with that thug mentality, everyone in this country, because it wasn't America at the time, Everyone over here were living together. They were eating together. They were having dinner and lunch together. They were marrying each other, even different races. They were producing children with each other. They attended worship service with each other. And, and they worked with one another. So how and why did that system get replaced with an oppressive one that was then called progress that we're still leaning on today? Many in America actually believe that slavery, uh, slavery was divinely sanctioned. And they also believe that emancipation was overstepping the boundaries to reverse God's decree that blacks should be slaves based on the supposed her, uh, curse of Ham. And I've told you before, Ham was never cursed. Canaan was. And God didn't curse Canaan. Noah did. You know, as Christians and Americans... They felt it was their divine duty to enforce the decrees of God and make sure blacks stayed in perpetual bondage and service to Europeans for 
their entire existence. These Europeans felt that the living conditions of those in Africa were degraded. And, you know, that's amazing that these Europeans felt this way because history has proven which people around the world were actually living in deplorable conditions. You've heard me mention the book before, Black Spark, White Fire by Richard Poe. See what Richard Poe has to say about that. And there are some other instances out there. Uh, I can't think of the book I read, but it was talking about how people in that part of the world where Europeans were didn't believe in bathing. They felt like the sweat in their clothes made their skin supple. No sweat in your clothes made you stink. But they wanted to say blacks in Africa were the primitive beings. You know, Europeans have gone to different parts of Africa for years and plundered the land. And then other Europeans want to say that Africa is poor and struggling. Have you ever looked up King Leopold? You know, he killed over 10 million blacks in Africa. And then conservative estimates of the slave trade says 15 million blacks were taken out of Africa. But our seminaries and our Christian churches and history in the media and everybody else wants us to focus on 6 million Jews. Why are we ignoring the 25 million blacks? But we have to remain focused on 6 million Jews. You figure it out. And then get you some Jewish encyclopedias and see what the actual numbers were. But Europeans have gone to different parts of Africa for years and they plundered that land. And see, they, you know, European descendants always want to see, you know, Africa is poor and struggling. See, that's why you have the situation over in country Niger right now. Western countries have used their influence to enrich themselves and, and they gained access to Niger's rich resources while those who live in Niger are living in poverty. So Europeans need to tell their people to stop going over there stealing the resources. But see, the media only gives you images of Africa they want you to see. They don't show you the great cities and thriving communities over on that continent. They want to promote to everybody and put in everybody's mind that all black people over there are nothing more than primitive bush men and women. They want to show you the images of the starving children over there. But they ignore the images of starving children right here in America that keeps growing at an exponential rate, especially under not Donald Trump, President Joe Biden. See, America has an image of prosperity to uphold, uh, which is why all the foreigners do what they can to get here. And what many find when they come here is there is some degree of opportunity. But when taxation hits them, they realize the oppression is real in America. See, the Bible says that the Israelites were slaves in Egypt for 400 years. Well, guess what the Bible also says? The nation to whom they will be in bondage, I will judge. Well, America, your day is coming. America has not been judged yet because of the things these folks have done to enhance their incomes, their families, their lifestyles, and their wealth at the expense of another group of people. I mean, but if we don't think judgment is coming, um, I mean, just look at some of the things going on. Look at the wildfires around all the different places. It's not just in the Hawaii situation right now. You got them going on in California. Um, I think there are some fires up in New York right now. Another another island over in Hawaii is uh, under fire right now. And there are a few more places here in Texas. There's a few, a few fires. So America's being judged, but they don't call it that. But they've been, you know, getting plagued for years. What do you think hurricanes are? What do you think tornadoes are? But I'm not here to talk about all that. See, but these people put in their heads that someone else was less than them. You know, some pro-slavery writers believe that blacks who overthrew their masters were a problem because they would get a sense of self-esteem. <laughs> And become rude to their former masters. You know, isn't that amazing that after keeping men and women in bondage, 
And when those men and women physically fought for freedom, these guys had the nerve to say that these blacks were rude to them. I mean, what did they expect? They said these people found out they had work and abilities outside of being slaves, and they didn't like them having those attitudes and mindsets. These pro-slavery writers felt, you know, um, that these blacks had untaught minds. You know, basically they weren't intelligent enough to know how they were supposed to act in the presence of their supposed superiors. You know, that's what they're saying. You know, they said that the mere fact that, you know, blacks exerted these behaviors made their character and morality, you know, unfavorable. Who did they become unfavorable to? They felt that it was best for Europeans to decide on granting emancipation before a black person would obtain freedom, you know, and to make sure blacks didn't get too full of themselves. They had to grant emancipation. They didn't want blacks taking their emancipation. Go back and listen to that video I did a few years back called The Law is the Law. See, we need to understand that America still operates under something called prehistoric law, which said Europeans, well, it wasn't a European doctrine, but Europeans took it and said Europeans could be the only judges of every other race on the planet. If a European wronged a black person, Europeans were the only one that could do anything in retaliation to the other European. If a black person did something to a black person, Europeans said they were the only ones that could determine what was going to happen to the person that wronged the black person. If a black person did something to a European, Europeans said they were the ones that could administer judgment to the black person. In every case, in every situation, they put themselves in charge of justice, or I should say injustice. See, we need to understand this stuff. America is still under that law right today, and that's why we have situations in this country that we do. That's why we as black people don't always feel like we got justice when we go through the legal channels. Because America is still operating under the prehistoric or primitive law mindset. It's prehistoric law or primitive law, depending on which one you want to call it or which author is writing about it. And so they believe that blacks who overthrew their masters were a problem. You know, they didn't want blacks to get too full of themselves by overthrowing their masters. Now, I want to read you something uh, one of the pro-slavery advocates said. And, and uh, you know, many of these Europeans said they didn't benefit from slavery. You know, right today, we have a lot of Europeans saying that they didn't benefit from slavery, and that's true. And they say that slavery doesn't exist today. So, you know, we need to stop talking about it. Well, you don't stop talking about the Holocaust. They will never let the Holocaust situation die down, ever. Long after we're gone, they're still going to be talking about the Holocaust. But they said, shut up about slavery, Negroes. See, the statement that they didn't participate and they didn't benefit, well, they do have some benefit, mere fact, based on their skin color. They might not have saw the financial benefit of ownership, but they get a lot of benefit, uh, benefit of the skin color. And, you know, we'd have to sit down one-on-one -on -one and, you know, get into some of that stuff. But, you know, one thing I learned some years ago is you can kill people, people can die off, but ideologies continue. Is John Rockefeller's ideology gone? Even though he is. Is Mayor Amster Rothschild's ideology gone? Although he is. Is the ideal, uh, ideology of Yahuwah gone? You see, ideologists can survive whether they're good or bad, if people believe in those ideologies. But here's what I want to read you. How short and insignificant appear to me a lapse of a few generations when we consider the ends to be obtained. We shall have passed away, but we shall pass away in the full confidence at, that our successors 
will reap the fruit of the tree we have planted. So what does that say? So as much as we hear that there are no benefactors of slavery today, that's just a flat out lie. Just do yourself an internet search and look for companies today that have historical ties to slavery. And it's a whole lot of, you know, look at a lot of these universities that were built off the backs of slaves that we encourage our black youth to try and get into. Find out about the banks who use slaves as collateral for loans that are still profiting today. And slavery isn't gone. What do you think human trafficking is? What do you think uh, child trafficking is? For all of you so-called environmentally conscious folks, where do you think the materials for your electric vehicles are sourced? And who is sourcing those materials? They are produced using child slave labor. But y'all are so conscious of everything except humans. And make no mistake about it, the children are being used to mine your materials are black. So, whether you want to believe it or not, you are an advocate of slavery right today. But since those lithium mines are in another country, you live with a thought process, you know, out of sight, out of mind. You know, down in Cuba, it was actually stated by one physician that the Negro slaves were allowed only five hours of rest per day out of 24, especially during crop time. Now, think about that. That's 19 straight hours of forced labor every day of the week. Now, where you work right now, how good of a worker would you be on only five hours of sleep seven days a week because you had to work the other 19 every day? You know, there's a documentary about the sugar plantations and how people were treated. And I, I can't, it, it's, I know it's two brothers, but I can't think of the name of the documentary right now. And it's it slipping my mind. Um, but it's worth watching. You know, just put in a sugar documentary or something in YouTube and it something should pop up. I'm Like I said, I can't think of the name right now. Uh, 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 okay, I'm not, I'm sitting here trying to pull it in my mind, but I'm, I'm not getting, so I'm going to just move on. You know, people want to say that slavery is over, but as I stated, big corporations are still earning millions and billions of dollars off of what was created centuries ago. And now if you go back in history and read some of the thought processes of slave owners, they actually uh, believe that slavery was a blessing to Negroes. You know, sure, you know. Other people have been enslaved in some cases, and I've never denied that. I actually have a video, video on this channel, uh, Who Were the Slaves? Uh, but how many of those other enslaved cultures were considered to be blessed by their enslavement? You know, since I started this channel, I've only touched on the slavery issue a few times. You know, I've stayed away from the topic largely because many people had already touched on it. And then I also avoided it because of the sheer brutality. I mean, I've read some horror stories. And since I've gotten back into my research of it, I found out how much it was promoted aloud and actually praised by Christians. And that was the most troubling thing to me. And so the reason I'm spending so much time on it now is because most, most people in society have no idea what's coming down the road in less than seven years. You know, we should be wondering why we have the health epidemic in this country, you know, that we do. You know, a friend told me about a documentary called A Perfect Human Diet. And in that documentary, it was stated that our current food and diet recommendations came from political staffers, not people with science backgrounds. So ask yourself, why would political employees be so interested in determining our diets? I want to read you a quote from Sam, Samuel Adams. A general dissolution of principles and manners will more surely overthrow the liberties of America than the whole force of the common enemy. While the people are virtuous, they cannot be subdued. But when once they lose their virtue, then will be ready to surrender their liberties to the first external or internal invader. That's the end of that. Uh, in the book, uh, Taking America Back, uh, written by Joseph Fair back in 2003, well, he released it in 2003. He said Americans are being bred by their government to be immoral, fat, lazy, and stupid. I mean, look at our food supply. Has it not accomplished that goal? Look at heart disease, number one killer in the world. Look at that type 2 diabetes. What are they? Get, we want to give you all these statin drugs, cholesterol. 
Your doctors don't even understand what the statin drugs do to your body, or maybe they do. Being on statin drugs inc increases your risk of type 2 diabetes. And then if you take the statin drug, it's going to destroy the cholesterol regulating enzyme in your body. And so you have to be on a statin for the rest of your life. But they don't tell you that statins actually increase your chance of heart attack by 36%. And statins only decrease your LDL cholesterol on average 3%. And yeah, YouTube might come. Somebody might complain and say, well, I'm not a medical doctor. Well, look at what your medical doctors have done. Allopathic medicine has harmed us as a society. And then they want to call naturopathic medicine alternative. No, allopathic medicine is alternative. Allopathic medicine is what we have today. And look how many people are sick in this country and sick around the world because of allopathic medicine. I'm giving you this information because I've been doing a lot of research by other medical doctors. You know, doctors who went and learned the allopathic system and said, you know, something's wrong. There's a diabetes doctor, professor at a university who's overweight with type 2 diabetes. But he's teaching people how not to be diabetic. What kind of sense does that make? So, has American government not accomplished the goal of being immoral, fat, lazy, and stupid? If you're immoral, you don't care about rules, therefore anything goes. If you're fat and overweight, you don't have the energy to do a lot of times the things that need to be done, therefore making you lazy. And if someone's trying to educate you about what's going on, you reject it, therefore being stupid. Why would your government want you to be in this condition? It's because if you display these characteristics, it becomes very hard for you to fight back against what they're doing to society. If you talked about uh, talk to people about most issues plaguing society, they will, in certain ways, tell you that the system is too big for them to fight. At what point do you just get tired of being pushed around? You know, bullying is a big thing, you know, these last few years. But most people continue to allow the United States government to push them around. They allow their medical doctors to push them around. You know, it's like one medicine doctor wanted to prescribe me. Oh, bones. Then turn out, one of the top side effects is osteoporosis. <laughs> I mean, it's not funny, but all your doctors have become are pill pushers. And that's why we can't get well. That's why they call your chiropractors quacks because the chiropractors are more interested in getting the body back as close to wholeness and normal as possible. But see, they don't consider chiropractors real doctors. Isn't that amazing? Real doctors treat the person. Real doctors get at the uh, point of disease. Fake doctors try to treat symptoms. Real doctors treat the cause. So now you have to ask your question, who's the real quacks? So you can't fight back. And, and as I stated, at what point do you get tired of just being pushed around? Now, I know many of you can't wait to do your civic duty when November rolls around so you can get your preferred candidate into office. You know, next question. How has that worked out for us so far? It hasn't. But, you know, even though everything I've been saying goes hand in hand, the goal was to keep blacks in an inferior position so they could make sure to continue to label them as brutes and savages. They didn't want them to get in any type of education. If they were brutes and savages, why would it matter if they got education? Because they were brutes and savages. And education would not have done them any good, would it? I mean, if blacks are so brutal and so savage, 
education wouldn't have done him any good. You know, but becoming educated would have proved to the black people that they were not brutes and they were just as equal as those who held the reins of power. And, you know, and as I've stated earlier, you know, ideologies can live on past the expiration of the person who brought forth the ideology. That's one of the main reasons they kept black children separate from their parents during the slave trade. There was no one left to pass on an ideology to the children. And look at what we're dealing with today. If you talk to many young people and try to educate them on things happening in society right now, they will literally tell you they don't care. And see, the slave masters didn't want the slave to get any awareness of their greatness. They didn't want to give up that profit-making, free labor aspect. They wanted to maintain the upper hand. What are we seeing today? They control the air. They control our food. They control the water we drink and use. They control the money supply. They control your movements. They control your retirement accounts. They control your health care. They control your marriage. That's what a marriage certificate is. They control your children. In your marriage, it's not written on a marriage certificate that you get from the state, but actually you allow, you give the government access to, you, you basically just a babysitter for the government if they want to come in and do whatever they want with your children. That's in your marriage contract with the government. Yet, we think we're free. Where does it say we need permission to breathe the air? Where does it say we need permission for the food that we put in our bodies? Where does it say government and companies have right to control God's resources like air and water? Why do you need a passport to leave the country? Why do you need a driver's license to drive across the country? Why do they think they can control what you do with your body? I mean, the last thing an oppressor wants for a person is to even think about freedom. Now, let me ask a question because white men are being marginalized right now. You know, there's a push by white elites saying that white men are the problem. <laughs> That's amazing, ain't it? And if they work to minimize the number of white men around the world, and they want to reduce the world population of white men, women. That means most people left will be people of color, since that is the new term for colored only today. So if they want to reduce white men and they want a servant class of people to serve them in the future, guess what that means? That means black people will be their servants. <laughs> Come on, people. Slavery is back in effect. Wake up. In, in many instances, if a slave master died, the slaves will actually require to kneel down out of respect for the master. And if he or she refused to do so, they will be flogged. Now, this me, and I'm pretty sure some of you feel the same way. When you have to beat the respect out of someone, that means you are not worthy of respect. That, I mean, it's just like if you tell somebody, you're going to respect me, you know you are not worthy of respect. A person who commands and demands respect has to never speak a word. Their actions and behaviors alone will command the respect needed. See, in the black community, a lot of black men brought that slave master mentality into their homes, marriages, and communities. And they felt that to gain respect, they had to fight or beat up on people, and that made them respectable. It didn't. It made you a tyrant. And men today, if you're beating, some, beating on people, you're a tyrant. I don't care who get mad. You know, and as we continue to transition and progress in our culture, we, you know, we got sophisticated. And we got degrees. And instead of physically forcing people to respect us, we showed our academic credentials to other people to let them know we were worthy of respect. I mean, how many times, you know, we meet somebody outside of where they work, and if they have a PhD, 
I'm doc. This is Doctor So and So. No, I ain't in your office. You ain't no doc out here. You're a human being. I respect you in your office, but you ain't no doc out here. You know, this is Reverend So and So. I ain't at your church. What's your first name? But we love to put titles in front of names to prove to people that we are worthy of respect. I, I don't care about your title. Oh, I'll, I'll applaud you for doing something in a discipline that allowed you uh, to get a higher education. But your degree don't mean nothing to me. Your title don't mean nothing to me. It's like, you know, uh, this one guy, I was around these guys some years ago and just cursing up a storm. And one of the guys in the group was a preacher. And, uh, you know, in the process of the guy cursing up a storm, you know, one of the other guys said, hey, man, you know, that's a preacher over there. And the guy doing all the curse said, oh, I'm sorry, preacher. And one of the other guys said, why do you think he's the only one that you should be apologizing to? See, but that's how we think. See, respect has nothing to do with credentials. Respect has something to do with your integrity or your lack of it. You know, in some cases, slave masters would bribe judges because they wanted to make sure the slaves would not show any attitude toward revolt. You know, and these judges, you know, gave out severe punishment. And that's why slaves were very careful about who they shared their plans with of escape or revolt. The judges, you know, could decide how severe the punishment was going to be in, in all of those cases. And I want you to listen to this decree. That shall any individual of the African race, whether free or slave, take up any weapon against a white person, though even pro provoked to do so, he shall, if a slave, be shot dead, and if free, his right hand shall be cut off by the common executioner. But should white be wounded, then, whether slave or free, the African shall be shot dead. That's the end of that. And, and we have Negroes around here agreeing with gun control measures. I did a video uh, was it last year, earlier this year, I don't remember, about who the gun control laws were put in place to keep the, gu hands, the guns out of the hands of. It was you, Negroes. And I can't believe Negroes are sitting around here talking about this. They all for gun control. If they keep guns out of your hand, you can't protect yourself against the people that's doing you wrong. And when the Second Amendment says you have the right to bear arms, it doesn't just mean guns. It means anything you use to protect yourself. But everything is focused on guns. So, if you're black, you have no common sense if you're agreeing with gun control measures. You know, because did you hear what I just read? The decree said, even if a white person provoked you, even if a white person provoked you, even if a white person provoked you, you were supposed to sit back and let white people do to you whatever they wanted to. Uh, the previous video I released was about turning the other cheek. Have you listened to that one yet? You know, but if you retaliated in any measure, slave or free, severe punishment was forthcoming. Even if the white person provoked you. Now, what, what I'm going to say next is not for the faint of heart because of how brutal it, it was. And so if you got a um, weak stomach, and weak countenance, you know, fast forward maybe about a 25, 30, 35 seconds. But for the black slaves down in Brazil, one of the punishments inflicted upon them was to be fastened to a cart where they would then receive between two to three hundred lashes. And then the slave master would take the mangled flesh, cut it off, and then the wound would be filled with cayenne pepper and salt. And they said because the pepper and salt protected the wounds from infection. Now, why 
would you beat somebody like that and then call yourself trying to keep them from getting sick? These folks ain't have no human or common decency at all. Now, I know from personal experience that cayenne pepper and salt will keep infections out of wounds. Now, I'm not giving medical advice. You do, do your own research. I'm just saying from my personal experience. But I tell you what, it ain't the best feeling putting no cayenne pepper or salt inside a wound. You know what? Another way they punished slaves in Brazil was to tie them to a stake and they would stick that stake on top of an ant bed and leave the slave there overnight, allowing the ants to bite them at will for the entire night. And since I'm on Brazil, go and do you some research and see who the biggest slave dealers were in Brazil. And then, since you call yourself a Christian, ask yourself, should you be standing with those people that your pastors tell you to stand with? Uh, another author goes on to say that Americans would allow this advocates of freedom and the rights of man, while at the same time they were jealous of blacks being able to partic uh, participate in those same rights. Why would these founding fathers, why would these other Europeans who came here before the founding fathers be, be jealous of blacks being able to benefit from the advantages of freedom? Ask yourself why. It's because they're scared of competition from black men. It's because they are scared of black men gaining an upper hand and treating them the exact same way they treated black men, women, and children. I'm going to do another video and tell you about some of the wealth that black people had in other countries and what Europeans did over in Portugal and Spain to steal their wealth. And then, uh, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you, give you that information. Whenever I do the video, you'll hear it then. So, I want to go and Bible and Apocrypha on you for a minute. Over in Jeremiah chapter 49 verse 10 it says, But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places, and he will not be able to hide himself. His offspring is destroyed with his brothers and his neighbors, and he is no more. See, the atrocities of Esau can no longer be hid. You know, they've done everything to hide what their, they and their ancestors have done. They've made books and they've made historical records disappear. They have placed premium prices on many of those books that remain to keep people from being able to purchase them, the average, everyday common man and woman. But thankfully, there were enough writers back then who produced works that escaped persecution and are now readily accessible to those who want the information. Second Esther 6 and 9 says, Now Esau is the end of this age, and Jacob is the beginning of the age that follows. Now, look at what the descendants of Esau have done all around the entire world. Look at what the descendants of Esau are doing right now. They love to run around and tell everybody about all the advancements they have created. Even the ones they stole from black people but want to act like they didn't create all of the chaos and destruction that's going on. And see, that's why the founders and other Europeans don't want blacks to have any power, equality, and control. It's because they know once blacks gain that access, their reign of terror is over. It's not because blacks will become their oppressors. It's because scripture has dictated their future already. And that's what they are really afraid of, scripture. That's why they changed and manipulated so much of the scripture. That's why they promoted that the black skin was cursed according to the Bible. But the Bible said leprosy was a curse. What is leprosy? The skin turning white. But they said black skin was cursed. See how little things were manipulated with the Bible? So if they manipulated small things, is it too much of a stretch to say or believe that they manipulated bigger things as well? I mean... These folks are so wicked, they even painted a new image of the Messiah. Do you realize how bold you have to be to change the image of Yahuwah's son? That takes some real boldness. Uh, I'm saying boldness, you know, because in sports we would say something else. Because you are telling the Most High you don't care about his creation because it doesn't fit your narrative. See, that's one of the reasons the books of Maccabees were removed. They had to hide what they did. 
But one thing you will learn about the truth, the truth doesn't care what you try to do to it. It's still going to surface. Why do you think the virus narrative is being filled with holes right now? It's because the narrative was full of lies and the next one will be also. What's the next one? Climate change. There is a video out there of a technical producer from CNN saying what they plan on doing to get people to believe in climate change and how they plan to beat that one in the ground for years. Much longer than the last lot of 2020 to 2022. You know, we've seen the images, only the images of the island in Hawaii. But there is a map. You can go online and put wildfires around the world. And it's a map and it'll show you every place there is a fire going on right now on every continent as I record this video. So they're going to use that to say the earth is heating up because of global warming. Don't believe the hype. If they can see clouds to intensify rainstorms and thunderstorms and hurricanes, they can see clouds to make it rain. So if they can see clouds to make it rain, do you think they can see clouds to prevent rain? Whether you know it or not, that's actually a military tactic. You know, even though... The, the cloud scene is a military tactic. Now, they've been doing weather modification since the late 1800s. But it's a military tactic. And now they do it around the world and in different countries. Now, I don't know if y'all remember when those Olympics was in Beijing. They, they did some of that stuff. And then uh, I think over in Saudi Arabia a few years ago, they did that as well. But it, it's a military tactic to find landmines to protect troops from before they advance. And see, a lot of American historians tried to paint slave masters as benevolent masters. And one author asks, uh, back in the 1800s, if the American slave was so well off, would the lowest English peasant be willing to trade places with him? Over in uh, South Carolina back in December 1848, I mean 1948, 1848 or 1948, must have been 1848. Uh, I'm pretty sure it wasn't. It could have been 1940, but I think it was 1848. Uh, uh, actual school teacher was convicted, tarred, and feathered, and, and they threatened to hang him because he said slavery was contrary to Christianity. But they didn't hang him, but he refused to backtrack on what he stated. So instead of hanging him, they they uh, fired him. You know, he lost his job, uh, basically living on the street to end up being a homeless vagrant. All because he said Christians were doing something wrong by participating in slavery. And, and you know, he was mistaken, you know, but he didn't know it at the time. Because the origins of Christianity is slavery. And, you know, he just didn't know it and neither do most of today's Christians. Because they don't know their own religious history. You still calling yourself a Christian? This guy lost his livelihood and almost his life because he dared criticize Christians for being active participants in the slavery situation. Christians were going to kill him because he was anti-slavery. You know, we've heard about slave masters producing children with slave women and then selling their children for profit. I mean, how low can you go? turning your own flesh and blood into merchandise. You know, there are historical accounts of many in America who were not black saying that the Constitution was not consistent because of the slavery issue. I mean, I can't think of the guy's name, but I've mentioned it before where the guy said, you know, how hypocritical the American founding fathers were where they were sitting there fighting the Revolutionary War for their freedom while at the same time holding a whip, making sure they maintain their slaves. You know, uh, you know I, that ain't exactly how he said it, but that's the idea of what he said. So don't come telling me about no founding fathers. And see, that was, some of those Europeans, they were, they were talking about ending the slave trade abruptly instead of over time. And they would consider going after ship captains and their crews. And one of the, one of the former presidents, John Adams, uh, I believe when a slave ship got here, he arrested every every uh, crew member on the ship, and he told them blacks they could go back home, but he arrested everybody. But see, though, though, some Europeans will consider going after ship captains and their crews. You know where the biggest pushback came from on that issue? The offices in America, 
of those who own the slave ships, you know, up in New Amsterdam, which is New York and other cities like that. Do you know who owned most of the ships coming to America? Stand with Israel, your Christian pastors teach you and have taught you for years. Why would Christian pastors tell you to stand with a people who dominated one of the most horrific situations the world has ever known? As one author stated, self-interest is never likely to procure the termination of the system. Translation, as long as they were making money, they had no desire whatsoever to end slave trade. I'll talk to you later.